Welcome to the final edition of Campus News this semester. I'm William Veith. And I'm Sarah Moscoso. Today we're covering the transition from Senate to Assembly, Blue Jay Day, and the Emotion Showcase. As the semester comes to an end, it also marks the ending for one club on campus. ECTV 40's Abigail Lindsay has the story. As students and faculty gather into Hoover 212 on Thursday, April 20th at 345 for the weekly student senate meeting, this meeting would be nothing but routine. On March 3rd, the announcement went out to the student body that the structure of student assembly had won the referendum voting, meaning that after 97 years, student senate would be coming to an end. Making April 20th not only the senior recognition meeting, but the last meeting of student senate. However, while Senate may have come to an end, the impact left on the campus will not be forgotten. Projects that Senate helped to carry out over the years include reusable to-go boxes for the marketplace, the creation of the Blue Jay Career Closet, along with helping to carry out E-Town campus traditions, including homecoming and tree lighting. For some senators, the organization helped to foster some of their closest friendships. It has been a time where I've been able to meet a lot of my closest friends. I have a lot of my fondest memories in the Senate. During Holmberg's time in Student Senate, one of the positions she held was the chairperson of the Advocacy and Service Committee. The committee works to plan service opportunities throughout the semester for senators and the campus community to participate in. Events that have been held in collaboration with the Center for Community and Civic Engagement include blanket making and seats for senior citizens, where participants were able to plant and decorate a flower pot to donate to the Masonic Village. The motto of Student Senate was advocating for students' rights, and this motto will carry on through Student Assembly. Uh, you know, we're starting a new chapter with Student Assembly, which I will be serving on as Vice Speaker, which I'm very excited about. And I'm just excited to keep on advocating. In Elizabethtown, Abigail Lindsay, ECTV 40. Thank you, Student Senate, for your work throughout the past 97 years. Last Thursday, Elizabethtown College students and campus community members gathered in the Bowers Writers House to hear about how Dungeons and Dragons meets lunch from viral TikTok sensation Jacob Powells. The role for sandwich creator has almost 2 million followers on TikTok and creates sandwiches with ingredients randomly chosen by a D20. Powell explains how he monetizes doing what he loves on social media while also being a stay-at-home dad. It was the last event for the semester for the Bowers Writers House. Blue Jay Day took place on Friday, April 28th in the Bowers Center Fieldhouse. The event was moved inside due to rain, but that did not stop a town of students from attending. The Fieldhouse hosted a variety of fun activities, from cornhole to an inflatable slide. Students flocked across the entire Bowers Center building, searching for hidden Blue Jay eggs to be traded in for prizes. Such prizes included free drink vouchers from the Blue Bean, gift cards at, to the campus store, and a special golden prize, two tickets to Hershey Park. The weather did not deter students from visiting the Kona Ice Truck and our very own J Truck, both of which were parked outside the Bowers Center front steps. Speaking of Blue Jays, here's Jake with sports. The men's lacrosse team capped off an outstanding regular season with another convincing win this past Saturday at home. The Blue Jays took down Catholic 18-9, finishing with a record of 11-4. Things got out of hand early after an energetic first quarter for E-Town. The team found the back of the net nine times in the first 15 minutes of play and never looked back. Eight Blue Jays scored goals, including graduate student attacker Ben O'Connor, who continued his tremendous season, leading the team with five goals. Now, the Blue Jays will head to the Landmark Conference men's lacrosse semifinal game, carrying an eight-game winning streak. They will play Susquehanna at home on Wolf Field this Wednesday at 7 p.m. In what was the season finale for the women's lacrosse team, E-Town traveled to Washington, D.C. to take on Catholic University on April 29th. Catholic started the game off with a few goals early before freshman Drew Bridges scored her 15th goal of the season to help keep the Jays in it. After the first period, Catholic led 9-2. E-Town fought hard in the second period as junior Sam Diaco and sophomore Madison Henelis each scored. The Blue Jays' effort would fall short as the team lost 24-5 dropping to 5-11 in what was a difficult season. When it comes to baseball, the Blue Jays have been killing it in the Landmark Conference. 
However, Elizabethtown would suffer their first two losses in landmark conference play and a doubleheader against Scranton on Saturday, April 29th. Starting in Game 1, the Jays struck first when Robbie Bertuccio scored on an RBI double by freshman Quinton Pirelli. While the Jays had a 1-0 lead after the top of the first, it wouldn't last long. The Scranton Royals took advantage of senior lefty Nicholas Ortega, scoring two runs in the bottom of the first. After scoring three runs after the first, E-Town would hold on to a 4-3 lead until the bottom of the fourth, where the Royals would put up a five spot in the inning. The Jays would go on to drop Game 1, 9-6. After a heartbreaker in Game 1, E-Town was hoping for different results in Game 2. In what was a back-and-forth game all afternoon, the Jays lost once again, 12-11. The men's track and field team won the Blue Jay tune-up on Saturday, placing first with 178 points. The Blue Jays stole the show, winning five events over the two-day event, beating out their 14 competitors. Junior Myron Holland Jr. was once again successful, winning the 100-meter event with a time of 10.9 seconds. Senior Devin Soto also nabbed a first-place finish with a 9-minute and 51.26 second run in the 3,000th meter steeplechase. Sophomore Adam Carmo took the top spot in the 110-meter hurdles with a 17.08 seconds. Finally, junior Malik Hudges won his event in the high jump with a 1.91-meter jump. The Jays also won the 4x100-meter relay. This gives the team some momentum as this Saturday and Sunday, they'll meet in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for the Landmark Conference Outdoor Track and Field Championship. As, the women's, as for the women's track and field team, they also came away with first place in the Blue Jay tune-up over the weekend. The team beat out their 13 competitors, finishing with a score of 196 points. Five events were won by E-Town in this one. Senior Emily Ward completed the steeplechase in 13 minutes and 29.99 seconds to take the top spot. And the team also won the 4x400-meter relay. Where the Blue Jays truly found success was in the Saturday's throwing events. Junior Aaron Miller placed first in the javelin. Junior Miley Nydig was the winner in the shot putt. And senior Trinity Soto won the discus event. This win provides the Blue Jays a ton of confidence as they turn their attention to the Landmark Conference Outdoor Track and Field Championship in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania on May 6th and 7th. The men's golf season came to an end this past weekend, placing sixth in the Landmark Conference Men's Golf Championship with a score of 671. Following day one of the championship, E-Town found themselves tied with Juniata College in the 7th with 349 points. However, the Blue Jays would improve their placing on day 2 with 322 points, moving up a spot in the final standings. Freshman Chris Kilduff was the highest placing Blue Jay in the event, as he shot 18 over par, tying him for 13th place by Saturday's end. Unfortunately, this is all that we have for sports, not only for this week, but also for the semester. It was a pleasure being able to cover everything. I'm certainly glad you, I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Like I said, that's all we have for sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jake. Emotion packed the Leffler Chapel and Performance Center when they performed two renditions of their spring 2023 showcase performance. The all-inclusive dance group gives people with little experience an outlet to move their bodies and improve their health. Emotion's performance, called On Top of the World, cost members of the Elizabethtown College community $5 and $8 for visitors to the college. Elizabethtown College students and members of the E-Town community had both Friday, April 28th, and Saturday, April 29th, to see the group perform, in which they were treated to a well-practiced and choreographed dance routine. This is the final episode of Campus News this semester. Make sure to stay tuned in the fall semester to keep getting quality campus news. If you're interested in being a part of production, make sure to check out our social media for the first ECTV interest meeting this fall. That's all we have this semester. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at ECTV40. I'm Sarah Moscoso. And I'm William Beef. Have a great summer and remember to take, take flight E-Town. E Hi everyone, my name is Danny Ray Reno. <laughs> and my name is Layla Murphy and we are your co-producers for Campus News this semester. Starting out this semester, we had little to no experience running a post whole production, and we just wanted to express our gratitude for the experiences that we've gained. Yes, and we also wanted to thank all of our viewers that have watched our episodes on YouTube, and thank you for all of the feedback that you've given us. 
And thank you to our wonderful talent, Armin Reed, Sarah Moscoso, Philip Patches, and William Veith. We really could not have put a face on news without you. And thank you also to our sports announcer, Jacob Moser. You really put a face and vision on the E-Town Blue Jays. Yep. And we also wanted to um, specifically dedicate um, a thank you to Sarah Moscoso and Philip Patches. Um, thank you, Philip, for helping with the post-production part of news. Obviously, we need to have it edited and posted. And thank you, Sarah, for having that up to date on our social media platforms and posting that so that our viewers can watch our episodes. And thank you also to Dr. Johnson and her COM410 advanced production class for allowing us to use some of their content in advertisements and other campus news projects. We really appreciate your help. Yes. And last but not least, we want to thank the crew. Obviously, we could not have gotten this done without you guys. Um, whether you were behind the camera for the production days or editing, getting content, writing scripts, um, it takes a team to get this done. So we really appreciate all of your work this whole semester. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who helped us through our you know, few missteps. We really could not have done it without your help and guidance. Yes, so thank you again. Good luck with finals. We hope you all have a good summer, and we will be back next semester in the fall for our next season of Campus News. Bye! Bye.